motion ain't easy rider. Well, like I say, your tree. First stop, Soldier Field. All right, we made it out to the famous Navy Pier here. Hello. About 20 some minutes later, we're back in the Northeast. So we are in near Messina, New York. And uh, we're at the St. Lawrence Seaway Eisenhower Lock. So hopefully, they said at about 1.30, there's gonna be some large-ish ships in the lock. Those are old uh, shipping channel buoys. That's one hell of a valve, ain't it? That one ain't That's a culvert valve, yeah. That's what opens and closes the water. It's supposed to be a power plant down here too. Power dam 11. Moses Saunders Power Dam. July 1958. Dwight D. Eisenhower Lock, St. Lawrence Seaway Development Corporation. Treaty of Ghent. Negotiation sent to neutral Ghent, Belgium, restored territory to either side, and a treaty was unanimously approved by the U.S. Senate on February 16, 1815, to end the War of 1812. A lot of people forget about that war. I see the power lines. The power plant must be pretty close. All right, let's go up to the viewing deck. I don't think there's anything in here right now, but there's the lock. The, uh, Moses Saunders power plant and dam over there across the way. We're out here just wasting some time until 1.30. So we were just on the other side over there. We drove up to over there, but it's, it's closed on that side. That's where operations are, so we can't get over there. But this is a nice little visitor center here. It's one heck of an intercom, isn't it? All right, we're back out at the uh, locks, and we got one Decent sized ship coming there. Pick it up there on the observation deck.
mistake because he's backing up. So we're going to try to catch it going out, but it looks like something happened. And it's going to take a long time. Cross it over into Vermont. All right, folks, we made it into Vermont and we're heading to uh, Ben and Jerry's. But they're not giving tours, so we're just going to get some ice cream. I think after that we're going to try to uh, maybe take a maple syrup farm tour but I know it's not that time of year for maple syrup to come out but maybe there's something interesting there. Alright we're on the upper guest parking lot at Ben and Jerry's. We gotta walk down. We got milk, cream, and sugar. Nice backdrop. What did you get? Butter pecan. Cherry garcia. Look, right here off of Ben and Jerry's. We got some salt panels over there too. Got any milk? They look pretty young, don't they? Holding about 35,000 pounds of cheese up to eight years. Wow. Tapping a maple tree. So we're out here on a uh, maple sugar farm. In late February, we drilled a tap hole about one and a half inches to a tree, pound in a metal spout, hang the bucket, and put on the cover. See that? Bucket. You see the spout here? That's how they tap into the tree. Then they also have this plastic tubing method. Hammer in a plastic spout, which is connected to sap lines from previous year. We struck a new drop line to connect larger lines. So this is the old school method. That's the new school method. Patiently wait for sugaring weather. You need blow freezing night to push the sap up from the roots into the branches. And then a day over 40 when the sap runs back down the veins and drips out the spout. Best weather for collection of sap is late February, early April. So this is done all during freezing weather. Each maple tree produces about 10 gallons of sap, which is like water and is 2% natural maple sugar. And 10 gallons of sap is boiled down in our sugar house. It makes about one quart of maple syrup. That's when the snow gets deep. They get the snowshoes on. You know, they get some snow if you got to put snowshoes on. Sap from tanks in the woods is brought by a tractor to the sugar house and run down this pipe to the storage tank. And on the eighth day, God looked around at his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. It's time we cut more firewood in preparation for sugaring season. As we mentioned earlier, sugaring is well known as the sugar bush fire. By mid-February, we are busy preparing for the maple season. That's the next stage. I guess Could this is the enough. evaporator. Yeah. There's a pipe up there. I guess they connect that to. Uh, oh, there it is, right there. Crop right over here. I guess where that comes. From. So they think this thing is wood fired. So each of the six compartments contain a batch of sap, cooking toward syrup. So there's two compartments per. Each compartment will be a few degrees less cooked than one in the head, so it's only one compartment becomes syrup at a time when the batch is drawn off more sap from the back pan runs into the least cooked of the front pan compartments. Without these separate compartments, all the sap would become syrup at once. I'm trying to figure out how each 
There's a batch of sap cooking towards there. Each part will be a few degrees less cooked than the one ahead of it. So only one component. Oh, here we go. Here's all the valves right here. I was wondering where all the uh, outlets are. Somehow they get from one pan to the other. Oh, here we go. These are all connected. This might be the filter. I don't know. It looks like it's got some plates. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely fun. filter plates. And then they store it in these things to uh, <coughs> drums. <laughs> Miss Butterworth. <laughs> it's just corn syrup, basically. That's when you know you get some snow right there when you got a, a pole. That's over 10 feet tall. That's probably 12 feet at least, isn't it? So they also make cheese out here. And uh, so they have cows and they have to feed the cows. So they raise hay and all sorts of things. <laughs> well, quite a business going here. Look at that, candies, popcorn, Maple Walk Farm Chapel. 15 minute walk up and down hill. Look at these taps. That's the new method. Drill a hole, hammer a plastic tap in. Looks like they got a main trunk line all the way up into the woods there. Yep, see all these are maple. See the leaves, maple leaves. Bucket with rocks equals five gallons of maple syrup. Walk through the tires to stimulate deep snow. Think of doing this several thousand buckets and you'll see why sugar makes, sugar makers like the plastic tubing. <laughs> I bet. That, that bucket there is filled with rocks. So it's the weight of a maple syrup, five gallon maple syrup. And they say if you walk that through those tires, it's like walking it through snow. And that's why maple farmers like the plastic tubing because they don't have to carry buckets all around. Is that Alvin, Simon, or Theodore? They're having a ceremony. That was Bethlehem, New Hampshire. A little quaint little town here near White Mountains. Near the Presidential Valley. We're headed to Hopefully we can get a view of Mount Washington and the Presidential somewhere down here.